The destruction of a war memorial in Durham, North Carolina yesterday was the latest example of police in action in the face of a rioting mob. Law enforcement simply looked on as the statue was pulled down and made no arrests in the immediate aftermath. Only today, someone was finally arrested. After yesterday's incident, Durham County Sheriff Mike Andrews urged people to stop complaining. Some might say my deputy stood by and did nothing, or don't mistake restraint for inaction. Had I ordered my deputies to engage a hostile crowd, there would have been serious injuries. Statues can be replaced, lives cannot. It's time for some ground rules. We must make clear what is acceptable and what is unacceptable behavior. No one is getting away with this. In other words, don't worry that the police let anarchy reign because they're watching videos of what happened and they're going to try to identify and arrest the people responsible at some point. We hope you're assured. Imagine the fire department making the same case. They're going to let your house burn down. Then they're going to sift through the ashes to try to find the arsonist afterwards. And by the way, don't complain. Well, the message of all this is clear, of course. The left has free reign to destroy what they don't like, and police will do nothing about it. We've seen that a lot. What will they feel empowered to destroy next? Well, Stacey Abrams, a Democrat running for governor of Georgia, has already demanded the destruction of Stone Mountain. That's the world's largest bas-relief sculpture. It's an artistic masterpiece, by the way. But it commemorates Confederate figures, so she wants it taken off the wall. That would put her in the same league as the Taliban, which you'll remember blew up immense ancient stone Buddhas because they offended the official ideology. If you've got views the left doesn't like, this should give you pause, especially now that we know the police won't intervene. What can't they do to you? That's a question that ought to be rattling around your head. Vincent Hill is a former Nashville police officer. Michael Baboni is a former Homeland Security Advisor for New York State, and they join us now. Vincent Hill, uh, to you first, why is this different from the fire department saying, you know, we're not going to put your house out, it's on fire, but it would be pretty dangerous if we showed up on the scene, but we're going to figure out later what happened. How is this different from that? Well, Tucker, thanks for having me. I, I think there's a huge difference. Of course, when there's a fire, there's an immediate imminent threat of a loss of life, right? So what the police in Charlottesville were dealing with, and we've seen it from the left time and time again in these anti-Trump protests, the Black Lives Matter protests, where people, when police show up, they immediately escalate. They don't want to listen. They start to throw rocks, urine at police. So I think the police were right in watching and a lot of people don't realize they were actually keeping the peace because you can actually arrest someone at a later time if you have probable cause to do that. So I think if police would have shown up in riot gear, we would have had the left again once police had to use force because someone wanted to resist or use force against them. Then we'd have the left saying, look, look at these white racist thug officers that are there beating on these people. So it would have fed into what the left Well, there's left no doubt. I mean, you're right. See. You're right. They would have. They absolutely would have said that. On the other hand, Michael, what's the point of having police if they don't stop violence while it's occurring? And by the way, people were hurt in Charlottesville, and the police didn't do anything about it. I mean, it was discouraging to watch that. The purpose of a, of a police officer is to protect life and property, preserve the peace, and I think we're kind of missing the point in terms of this whole event. Where were the police? Not. And when the moment of the violence occurred, where were they beforehand? Good policing involves intelligence. It involves people on the street knowing what's going to happen, anticipating the violence that could erupt, and putting resources to apply that. This is such an ironic situation in the sense that, yes, we could prevent something from happening by not getting engaged. But if you take that to the extreme, what would happen if you had an active shooter in a school and you had a police officer show up and said, I'm not going to go into the school, I'm going to wait for backup because it may be too dangerous or maybe I could escalate the situation. That response has been rejected after Columbine. So there is a responsibility, but it begins way before the violence occurs. Right. No, that's, I, that sounds exactly right. Vince, let me just say I'm deeply sympathetic to the police. I can't imagine what it must be like to wade into something like that and people throw rocks and urine at you. But I also, I get the sense in watching these, not just in Charlottesville, but also in Baltimore and in Ferguson and Berkeley, that the police are being told by the political figures to whom they report don't get involved. This is a political decision coming from on high. I wonder if you think that's what's going on. 
Yeah, and that very well could be the case, Tucker. I mean, when you look at it from a number standpoint, and I always look at things factually, right? When you look at the size of these crowds, take Durham, for instance. You had a crowd of over 100 people. I'm sure you didn't have that many officers there on the scene, right? So let's say you had to call for backup. Let's say you had to call other officers in. Then you've taken those officers off the street to allow other crimes to happen. So, you know, when you're looking at things like that, it's a lot easier to say, yeah, I'm going to Monday morning quarterback this when you're not there and you're not having to make these decisions in real right. time. Mm -hmm. yeah. Of course, well, of course it is. That's why we hire the police. That's why we give them money and, and guns, <laughs> so they can make those hard decisions. No, I'm, I'm not being glib. I'm being sincere. That's why we respect the police because yeah. it's a really it's a hard gig. So, Michael, what do you think was going through the minds of cops in Durham yesterday when this group of angry children pulled the statue down and they had to stand there? Like, do you think the average cop wanted to stand there? I, I can't imagine that they did. Uh, one of the ironies, of course, is that the picture of the woman who's, who's climbing up on that ladder, if she had fallen down, would she have been able to sue the, the um, municipality saying, wait a minute, why, how, I got hurt by doing this, why didn't you protect me? That's a part of the irony here. When you come in, you have to establish the rule of law. There is no protected speech that is violent. It just isn't. So what you do is you separate the folks. And, by the way, this didn't come out of the blue. You had Charlottesville beforehand. It's about a 360 degree awareness as to what's going on, not just in your community, but around. And so the folks in Durham didn't think this could possibly happen. Well, they need better intelligence from my perspective. And by the way, it is the job of folks in government to do the Monday morning quarterback because we're going to be a part of the review panel and the review boards to say, were the actions of the police officers appropriate? It's our job. Right. And this is going to happen again. Gentlemen, Michael Vincent, thanks all for coming on. I appreciate it. Tucker, always a pleasure. Thanks.